أنه الحق الحمد لله الذي أرسل الرسول بالهدى والدين الحق ليذر على دين كل وكفى بالله الشهيد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد This session is a session of question and answer الحمد لله الله has granted us this opportunity again to answer some few question of those people who ask questions Question number one is, I suspect my in-laws are doing magic on me. They are very close to me. I have no other way to escape it. Because I have to visit them because I don't want to cut the ties of the kinship. I have to go and take the kids to my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, my sister-in-law. Likewise, both sides, husband and wife. Sheikh, what can I do from this ordeal? Right. First thing is you should pray five times. Full stop. Second, rely upon Allah Rabbul Izzah. Third, tie your camel. What do I mean that by that? Make sure you eat seven ajwa dates in the morning before you visit them. Clean stomach before you eat anything. Make sure you eat seven ajwa dates. You, your children, and your husband. Go visit them. Make sure you don't take no pictures. Make sure they don't have your pictures. Make sure you say that we don't agree with pictures. So no pictures. Gifts. So if you take gifts from them, make sure these gifts, you read upon them. You read Surah Al-Falaq, Nas, or you just destroy them. If it's cloth, make sure you have a rukya water. Dip it in the rukya water and give it to charity. Pictures. Refrain for it. Now, you leave in your stuff. Make sure you should not do that. You should absolutely refrain from leaving your stuff there. Make sure you are fully aware of your surrounding. If you suspect your in-laws are doing magic. But the word suspect is not a good word. You need to have a tangible evidence for you to suspect. But to be cautious and be protective it's very very important for a muslim because today there is very little believing men and women around there so this is what you should do you should be precaution and be alert and do not make the other people worry that you are alert you rely upon allah and just do the important stuff eat your ajr dates whenever you visit them even if you go and sleep there Make sure you have your ajr date ready before you eat the breakfast. Have it, you and your kids. And no pictures, no taking gifts. If you take gifts, make sure you dispose the gifts. And do not leave anything of yours there. This is very simple. And don't cut the ties of the kingships. This is from Allah Rabbul Izza. I've sent the message. Question number two, can a child be possessed? Yes, a child can be possessed. I have seen a child who is seven days old who is possessed and I've seen a child who is four years old who is seriously possessed. I went through emotion when I see the seven day old child being possessed. But it's Allah who's putting me through this experience. Alhamdulillah. I ask Allah to make it easy for every child out there who's got spiritual problem and their f the parents are struggling now whether the father and the mother is possessed or the father and the mother is not possessed the child can be easily be possessed one is because if the father and the mother is not upon the quran and sunnah they will have problem the way forward is following the quran and the sunnah because Allah Rabbi Al-Izzah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Isra Share them, their children and their wealth. Share with them. Who is that? Shaitan. So if you are not, if you have an intimacy, you're not saying the dua, your child will have a problem. Number one. Number two, if the child has been born and you expose him to an environment where people come and say things, oh, the child is gorgeous, wow, the child is good, that child will have a problem. So you need to protect that child before calamity befalls. And who's going to take the concept? You, the parent. 
you are the one who will struggle with sleepless nights. You are the one who will struggle. Oh, my child is this, my child is that. But in fact, you should have already followed. You should have followed the Sunnah. The Sunnah was already there and the Quran for you to hold tight to it and pro protect your children. Because once the child have problem, is very very difficult situation. Now. Whenever there is evil person coming to your house, you may think he's a good person, but he, whatever he utters is evil. Wow, beautiful child. Wow, the child has got beautiful hair. Wow, he's got beautiful cheeks. Wow, he's got beautiful eyes. This brings problem to the child. I know one child who somebody utters something. Wow, he's so white. And the child has start having spots all over the body. This is the problem brings other people bring to the family, to the parents, and to the child. So this needs to be closed. This door needs to be closed. How? By reading upon the child du'as. By uh, these people who come here, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim, make sure they say, Allahumma barik, or mashallah, or barakallah. All these needs to be said. Also, you need to refrain from the eyes of the children. Not these people coming and saying, ah, you have a child. This is a blessing from Allah. You have to hide it. You have to hide it or you have to ask Allah to protect. But you have to make take measures. You have to tie your camel yourself. So if the parents are possessed and they are not following the sunnah, the child will be possessed. If the parents are following the Quran and Sunnah and not possessed, the child will be free from any possession. But if they are not possessed and they are not following the Quran and Sunnah, the child will have infliction by Allah. But shaitan will never leave. Shaitan loves to punish the son of Adam. He enjoys it to cause calamity to the son of Adam. So two notions, the parents are possessed and the parents who are not possessed. So there's only one way forward. You are following the Quran and Sunnah, your child will be saved. You are not, your child will be possessed. Now the child, if he's young, you read upon him. If he's getting older, you teach him. Teach him how to read upon himself. Teach him how to rely upon Allah Rabbul Izzah. And you will see the benefits of it, inshallah. It's a very complex situation. Why? Because when the child is awake, you cannot read on him. Absolutely cannot. It's difficult. I have tried it and I've done it so many times. So what you do is wait when he's asleep. Now before sleep, make sure he has sidr bath or sidr shower. You get sidr powder, you scrub him from top to bottom every night before he goes to sleep. Or you can do twice, it's up to you. When he is going to sleep, apply olive oil from head to toe. And when he's asleep, now read upon him at least 30 minutes. One hour. Make sure you damage the shaitan when the child is asleep. Don't give him the opportunity and read on all over your corners of your house. I've come across recently a child who's only three years old who eats the food and gives the food to the corners of the house and speaks to the corners of the house. This is the situation. This child was possessed because the mother was fed sihr while the child was in the stomach. And the sihr hit the mother. So there is sihr mushtarik there, connection between the mother and the, the child. So the child goes around and speaks to the, every corner of the house, in the house and in the school. So this is the level of possession. So what needs to happen is before this occurring, you need to prevent. So when it happens now, you struggle. So the best time to read on the child is when he's asleep. Read on him when he's asleep and you will achieve a victory. Make sure the food he eats, you read upon it. Make sure the milk he drinks, you read upon it. Make sure anything, the clothes he wears, you're making him wear. If he's old enough, let him say the dua. If not, you say it for him. So make it difficult for the shaitan. Number three, getting raped in the toilet. This is one of the most complex and uh, very fragile state of mankind to be raped in the toilet. Why does it happen? It happens because there's a possession and there's jinns in the toilet. So the jinns target the individual, wait for him there and rape him. Uh, it's an Ashik jinn who came from the toilet. So they wait for the opportunity and they rape the individual there. And the individual 
two situation either he hates it or love it now what needs to be done is the adhkar of going to the toilet needs to be read frequently and this person who is getting raped in the toilet it is not only one person there's so many people who are going through this needs to have a ruqya done number one, needs to hold tight to islam number two, number three, needs to read the dua going in the toilet number three, the toilet needs to be smoked by either bakhur luban harmal anything that will irritate the jinn who stays in that place in the toilet so make it difficult anytime you're going there smoke it and go inside do whatever you're doing shower or and come out make sure you hold tight to adhkar morning evening and pray your five times salah because being raped by jinn is not a good thing we ask Allah to protect our children protect ourselves shaitan he's there to cause harm and he loves it doing that because he has envy towards the son of adam number four learn how to live with the jinn shaitan this is another very difficult state it's crazy it's absolutely crazy for you to learn how to live with the devil how can you learn to live with the devil when the devil has taken an oath black and white uh, that he will pursue son of adam and he will take a big chunk of son of adam with him in hellfire and when allah rabbul izza says vividly he is your enemy inna shaytanu lakum adu fattaqidu adu shaytan is your enemy take him as an enemy how can you learn to live with the shaytan jinn he makes you think that whenever you do the treatment that instead of becoming better you'll become worse no you will get better if you persist hassan al-basri says shaitan looks at the son of adam if he seem wobbly he attacks so this is what it is if you do the treatment the first day and you see being attacked carry on doing the second day do the third day do the fourth day steadfast and you'll see slowly slowly defeating the devil mal'oon kafir so the shaitan jinn fight him back don't learn to live with it no absolutely not because if he's not taking away your religion now he will take it away by allah unless allah has mercy upon you because allah said man yahdi illahi fa huwal muhtad whoever allah guided no one can misguide allah has decreed the shaitan to be there so you need to fight and allah has given you the opportunity and everything the wealth and everything to fight fight him and remove him the shaitan jinn from your body don't let him stay in peace don't learn to live with it it's a very crazy notion it's a very crazy ideology to have that i learn to live with it. La, 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 la. you've got a very weak iman if that's the case you cannot learn how to live with the enemy the shaitan the one who is taking an oath the one who says he's gonna take the son of adam to help her you cannot learn how to live with him no, no, no. you cannot question number five is i cannot be pregnant i've tried so hard to be pregnant i cannot be pregnant this happens to a lot of sisters inshallah in few days time i'll post a clip inshallah about black magic of the pregnancy but this happens to a lot of sisters that they cannot conceive is two things either it's because of allah rabbul izza black and white or either it's because they've sihr black magic there to stop them from conceiving i have seen a lot who they sihr there and the shaitan al-ashiq who stopping them from conceiving so what needs to happen is you need first of all to know it is not black magic is stopping you from conceiving and becoming pregnant if it's that's not the one the second is if it's not black magic then it's from allah because allah is the one who gives whoever he wants he give boys to whoever wants he give daughters to whoever wants he give boys and daughters to whoever he wants so what needs to happen is don't go and start reading surah maryam just like other sheikh's advice what you need to do you need to make dua frequently there's stories after stories of those who made dua and allah made them conceive the story of musa alayhi salam time there was a woman who allah made her barren and she asked musa alayhi salam musa alayhi salam go and ask allah to give me a child and allah 
told Musa alayhi salam in the books of Qadr this woman was decreed not to have child after some times Musa saw that woman with a child when Musa saw that child he asked the woman whose child is it he says mine and never say anything he went back to Allah because he speak to Allah direct Allah told Musa alayhi salam this woman was making dua frequently ya rahman give me child and I grant him my child Zakaria alayhi salam in the Quran in surah al-Imran Hunalika da'a Zakaria rabba eh Zakaria called upon Allah when he saw what كلما دخل عليه المحراب وجد عندها رزق قال يا مريم ان لك هذا قالت هو من عند الله ان الله يرزق من يشاء بغير حساب every time he enters into the chamber of Maryam he says food where is this from Maryam he says from Allah Allah gives whoever he wants and straight away Zakaria made dua هنا لك دعا زكريا رب and Zakaria called what what did he say oh Allah give me a child and Allah gave him a child. So the first way to go is for you to make loads of dua and give charity, charity, charity. No, go and read Surah Maryam. Uh -uh. Dua and charity, 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 and you will see. Now, if there's magic, you have to fight that magic for it to break. If there's none, dua and charity, dua and charity. And make sure you pray your five times Salah and you have morning and evening. If there's any question needs to be asked, please send an email. Inshallah, I'll compile a video in the future again. Inshallah. Wa akhru da'wana wa salamun ala al-mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.